April 5th, 2021. Uh, this is Oblast with Don and Kevin. I'm Kevin. And I'm Don. And tonight we've got uh, Dan on. Hey, hey. So uh, we're going to do our normal interview uh, format. Uh, but I just want to talk a little bit about show notes really quick. Uh, I want to thank all the Patreon um, supporters. If you're one of those people that are using Patreon uh, and uh, with us, you know, we have had about four shows, I think, um, either shows or Donny Diaries, et cetera, that have been added, three or four, um, that are patron only. So if you haven't heard those shows and you are a patron, you do need to use the uh, unique RSS feed that is assigned to your account. That's just kind of how we do it. Uh, and if you have that, you know, it's, you know, it's in the Patreon. If you have that, you'll be able to hear all of the shows that you might be missing. Uh, I do try to post the shows uh, on the uh, news feed on Patreon, and you can't really listen to them uh, via the web unless you're logged in now. I, I don't know if that was a thing before, but um, you cannot unless you're, well, not logged in, but RSS. Like, you have to use your special RSS to hear those shows. Um, and, you know, uh, we're just providing those, as, you know, as a benefit for the people that are helping the show stay on the air and helping us pay our server fees and our audio enhancement fees and all that. So I really want to thank everybody that's uh, doing that. I've also been doing a, a string of Will It Work videos on our YouTube channel, and I also post those on Patreon. I'm going through my video game consoles. Man, it's a lot of work. It's such a lot. You have no idea how You think it's like I'm just going in and grabbing one and then just talking about it. But it's like, <laughs> oh, my God. It's like I got to put everything like I got to find all the different things that they have and put them in different boxes. And then I sit down and then I got to make sure they actually work. Right. And I've actually burned out like two of them. Uh, I'm trying to repair one now. And then like I had this pal one and I was trying like six different ways to figure out, can I get this to work? You know, like I don't know a way to see. Like, I have a hard enough time with NTSC video, but trying to get pal video to work. I'm just like, man, I don't know. And then I guess like there are like Russian uh, like Soviet era Pong systems I've seen. And I bet those run on like the, that weird, like C cam spec instead of PAL or NTSC. And I, I, I don't know, because like the point of this is to make sure they work and Pong systems, you turn them on and they, they make these, no, you know, boop, boop, boop. But then there's like, there's no video. And then, you know, you're just like, I, I don't even know. And I'm like reading this thing and it's like, well, with PAL, uh, or it was on the UHF band, right? And it was usually channel 30 to something like 40. And I'm like, 10 channels in the UHF band. I got to try and figure this crap out. And I'm like, I don't know. Uh, so I don't know if I could. I might just give up on the PAL systems and just be like, just use them as like, um, you know, just vis like this. P people in Europe had Pongs too. I don't know what they were like because I'm not going to try and turn any of those on. But uh, there you go. You can see what they look like. Anyway. But I also have a, a large variety of um, consoles that I've been posting. And uh, right now, I think, you know, about uh, 21 of them have been, they, they go up one a day, so I'm staggering them out. 21 have been posted, but I've actually done about 70 so far. So wow. uh, if you check the channel daily, there's at least one every day that gets posted, and I'm thinking I have somewhere between 200 and 300 total. Um, but then like I, I find gaps and I'm like, I need to go buy this right now. And I like order one off of eBay. So the number might increase as a sickness that I have with this whole thing. So anyway, if you're interested in that, definitely check out uh, the video game news um, YouTube page and, or just go to our Patreon at patreon.com forward slash VGN. And uh, you'll be able to, uh, um, see those publicly. So you don't have to be a Patreon to see the list of consoles on our Patreon. Okay. All right, Dan. <laughs> Here we go. So, let's, do it. uh, let's see. Um, your parents, can you tell me, um, uh, how they met, what they did and how they met? Like, what did they do for work and how they met? Yeah, absolutely. So my mom, she was, uh, she worked in a hospital as a nurse. So she's, she's been doing that her whole life. She still is at the same job that she was at when she met my dad. Um, my dad, he's a electrical engineer and then he works on uh, CT scanners for GE. And uh, Interesting. they're no longer doing that anymore. They're both, uh, my mom still works, but she's, she's about to retire and my dad's retired now, but they met through mutual friends. I think it was uh, my mom. She had a friend who knew my dad 
And then they were both in their like early 30s at the time. And then after that, I guess it was all history. Wow, that's interesting. Yeah, CT scanners, those can be kind of dangerous sometimes, right? Like they have like radioactive parts or things like that. It's, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. Yeah, it's a inter- it's an interesting job. I'm sure, yeah. He probably did well at it if he did it his whole life, so that's that's pretty cool. Um, I had a girlfriend who uh, worked for the company that decommissioned that equipment and uh, she worked at one of the few facilities that actually um was able to remove them because they were radioactive, mm-hmm. you know. Right. They had all this government stuff that you have to do to make sure that there's not like you know what happened in I think it was like Brazil or something like somebody retired some kind of radioactive or they just they just left it somewhere. They were like, we can't pay the bills, so we're just going to leave the MRI here, you know, and <laughs> yeah. then like scrap metalers were just like, let's just, you know, sell all the scrap metal. And meanwhile, it's, there's like this radio radiation everywhere. You know, people are getting sick and all this sort of stuff. It's like one of those right. famous stories or whatever. So, yeah, there's a lot of um, there's a lot of overhead on that. You wouldn't think it's pretty. Yeah, crazy. And and. And to elaborate on that too, not to jump too far ahead, but because he was in the the CT scanner like area, he actually got uh, his heart scanned, and we actually found out that there's like some sort of uh, plaque buildup in our in our family history. So it actually saved his life. Wow. That he actually got that got that heart scan done. Mm-hmm. We figured it out that uh, that's something that I got to worry about too, which is wonderful. But <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, it, that's good to know, though. I mean, for sure, right? You, you know, it, it's playing on the don't play on the machine. Oh, wait a minute, hold on, wait, go back in the machine. You know, right, right. <laughs> we gotta we gotta look at this. Okay, right. What? What is? Anyway, um, okay. So, uh, so, um, where were you born? I was born in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Are and, you still? Uh, I- are you still there now? Yeah, yeah, I'm still living there, and I okay. actually, well, I'm I'm outside of out, outside of Milwaukee now. I live in a in the suburbs, but uh, you know, I still stay in the same area basically ever since I was born. Traveled a lot, moved around, but it's it's still my home. Let me ask you this: Do they still what, do like when people when you tell people you're from Milwaukee? Do they still back in the day they used to do Laverne and Shirley? Do they still do that? <laughs> no, it, it matter of fact, I just get like. I get a lot of questions as to where it is. Like people don't even know where it is. And then they, and then they ask about like, Hey, do you have cows walking around like in the roads and stuff? I'm like, no, absolutely not. It's just, it's a normal city. It's a lot like a, a mini Chicago. Yeah, you guys it's really probably. close to Chicago. Right. Right. I mean, I've, right. I've been in Chicago and then I needed a place to stay. And I drove to Milwaukee to stay at a, like an embassy suites one time. So yeah, exactly. it's, it's, it's close to Chicago, which is, you know, it's almost like a suburb of Chicago. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I've been, well, I, yeah, hundred percent. I was actually, I actually saw Hannibal Burris like a year or two ago, and that was the first joke that he let off with. In, oh, really? <laughs> just, to, just, to, just to roast the crowd. Yeah, <laughs> that's funny. Um, yeah, no, uh, well, I love it here. Yeah, that's that's cool. Um, so so you're still there? Yeah, you still there? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, have you ever left? Like, I mean, I, I've just, in terms of permanent location, I've just moved around this area. Now my job is like trying to get me to move to Orlando. So if anything, that'll be the first move that I actually make. But oh, sure. uh, I, I've been here. I've been here my whole life. I just turned 30 and yeah, yeah still, no. still kicking. I'm mostly asking just as a humorous thing. Like, you know, like you've never right. le- actually left the city at all. You know, <laughs> like right. no, I've been no, out. I've been out. Nobody yeah. goes outside. This, what are you talking <laughs> about? There's nothing out there. You know, when I lived in that, when I lived in Ashley down there by Columbus, when I was on my, when I got kicked out, these, our neighbors, the, the girl that lived there, she was like, I'd never been south of the Walmart. Like, there's really? people like that yeah yeah she's like i don't go anywhere she goes i stay in the area i stay at my house she goes i've never been south of the walmart and it's just like that's just that's just <laughs> country that's just country. right but yeah. and you guys know you guys know what the midwest and everything i mean it, it's great it's a great place to actually live because it's it's cheap you can yeah. you know you could just kind of hang out there and then just save money and, and do whatever you want. So there's there's usually a group of people who either travels a lot if they live here permanently or just like you said, they've literally never been anywhere else and they just kind of roam around the area. <laughs> yeah. Anderson, yeah. You, would you like, you got like, what, a year or two out of high school and then you're like, I'm just going to go drive to Oklahoma with Kevin. I'm Ryan. going to, yeah. <laughs> I was just like, whatever. Just took off and lived in Oklahoma like, for a while. I was like, I don't need you people. I'm going to go here. And, <laughs> you know, awesome. somebody was like, you're going to make millions of dollars. And I was like, well, okay. Yeah. Why not? <laughs> then I realized hey, I had to do something. 
better to do it then, you know? I mean, yeah, figure out what right. you want. Exactly. So, uh, Dan, uh, siblings, brothers, sisters? Yeah. Yeah, I have two younger brothers. Uh, one of them's 27. The other one is 22. And, uh, yeah, I mean, at this point, you know, we all grew up together. We were all... <laughs> We, we never were really close, never were really tight, but, you know, we've all been kind of doing our own things our entire life. And, uh, you know, uh, they're, they're both, they're both into, uh, their own, each one of us, we we all have our own little track in life and we're all kind of like going separate directions. And that's just kind of like the theme of how all of us grew up together, to be honest with you. I think that's pretty standard for like brothers and, and, and things. My brother and I are unusual in that we hang out, but like most brothers, like, you know, they're cool. Like Anderson, you've got three brothers. He's cool with all of them. You know what I mean? But it's, um, yeah, it's not, I never uh, see him. yeah, I never hang out with them. Right. I text them. A lot of times you just get annoyed <laughs> by your brothers, you know? Oh my God. So annoying. <laughs> <laughs> even today, it's just ridiculous. the story I got. It's not even, I don't, I don't even know if we have time, maybe, but <laughs> Um, okay. Well, that's cool. Did, have you ever worried about, um, uh, being the oldest brother that one might assassinate you so that they can take the throne? <laughs> oh, no, 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 not at all. None of that. None of that. <laughs> Do you know the riddle of steel? <laughs> Go. Crumb. Okay. Uh, elementary school, public school, private school. Yep. Yep. Public school. I went to, uh, I wound up going to a school that was actually like right down the street from me. So I walked to school every day. Uh, it was a it was an interesting building to be honest with you. It was like a pod. It was a pod system, mm -hmm. so it was just basically like three big octagons which connected everybody together with the gymnasium in the center. Yep. And uh, yeah, it was Oof. it was an interesting place. It was <laughs> yeah. But I, I used to walk to school every day, just back and forth. It was just kind of a kind of a simple life growing up, to be honest with you. Not much happened. <laughs> We, uh, we, my elementary school had the pod system. I'm curious if it's the same way. Um, you know, we, we had, um, two sides, right? Um, mm -hmm. and, uh, we had like two in, in the corners, right? Cause it was a square. Okay. So think of a big mm -hmm. square. In the corners, you had two enclosed classrooms. So like there were two first grades and, and they were in the classroom, you know, the two enclosed classrooms. And then the other three, you know, they were, um, uh, you know, open to the pod. And then the pod for those, you know, who are have no idea what we're talking about is just like mm -hmm. a big carpeted area, which is like in the middle where you could have like everyone assemble or whatever, for whatever reason. Right. And for the do, movies. Yeah, yeah. Movies or do calisthenics or <laughs> no, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> um, was that how it was or was everything closed off in each one of your rooms? Cause I always thought the open, the open air like that was unusual because you can make a lot of noise, you know, like right. it's kids mm -hmm. and it's like three classes of just people screaming all the time. Um, and especially when, like back in when, when I was in school anyway, like sometimes teachers would lose their shit, you know, on oh, a kid yeah. oh, and yeah. just like, you know, just be like, they, they just have a meltdown and start screaming at it. And it's like, you know, all these other teachers are trying to distract, you know, the kid like, don't look over there. Let's pay attention <laughs> to what we're doing. You right. Know, like, right. Johnson alone. What's going on yeah. So, there? so, so we it, it was probably like four different classes going on at the same time and they were only like everything was open so like the the walls didn't even go to the top of the ceiling so you could technically like hear over oh wow. so what would happen what would happen is it's like we'd have one class in one room then we'd move over to the next one and have the next class wow. so like everybody everybody would get like super distracted hmm. you'd have like a tv set up in the next class so everybody knows there's a movie coming up and it was just kind of like for for me, like I had ADHD. I was just always like thinking about you know leaving or like running out the right. door doing something else. Right. And and yeah, it wasn't really a good learning environment for no. me to be honest with you. So so did your grades suffer? Oh yeah, I mean I, I was I was <laughs> not very good in school. I mean a, a lot like I don't know I our lives don't really like relate in terms of like the, the, the grow up aspect. You know, I obviously like listen to all your stories and stuff growing up, but uh, yeah, I mean, I was terrible in school. Like they, they put a box around my desk just because like they thought that would help, that would help wow. like, with distraction or anything. But all that does is just put a spotlight on you because you're the kid who has a box on, like, right, like right. a box on his desk. So it was a, uh, it was an interesting uh, experience growing up, for sure. I, I, listen, I was no scholar in school. I don't, I don't know. Um, I had uh, what they had. They had a thing called a homework folder, and because my grades yeah. were always suffering, so I had to like 
put my um, home, you know, homework in a, in this folder and take it home. And then my parents had to like, you know, sign it or whatever. And then I had to bring it yeah. back. And then the teacher would apply my grades to the folder <clears throat> so that when I brought it back to my parents the next day, they would see what I got. And I also tended to live in a kind of um, a, a version of a, a suburb concentration camp at that time of my life. So <laughs> it was uh, it was right. no fun um uh it, bringing back any kind of a poor grade so no i right. i hear you i didn't they didn't put me in a box or anything but uh, yeah no i i had a hard time in elementary Close. school yeah. yeah yeah i mean for me honestly like like the grades they didn't get better with any of that stuff so like i had like a little folder they gave me stickers and stuff so they give me a sticker when i you know got my sheet signed just kind of like you just said you know do the homework get your parents to like write off on it all that stuff so it was uh for me, like I was just kind of fighting with the with the school system my, almost my entire life until I actually got out and into the real world. To be honest with you, yeah, I'm curious. You know, you said you had like a attention deficit there. Were you um? Did you try medication for that at all? I mean, because my brother's kids did, and and it seemed to help them a lot. But I know some people are um hot and cold on that. You know what I mean? Like some people did, and some people didn't. You know that kind of yeah. Thing. Yeah. So for the longest time, my parents thought that that wasn't the way to go. But eventually, you know, like the grades were just such an issue. I mean, I never failed any grades or any classes, to be honest with you. But uh, they wound up putting me on Ritalin when I was younger. Sure. And and, you know, now as I'm older and I've actually like experienced some of this stuff and know what it actually does, uh, I probably would would recommend my parents not to do that. No, you know, yeah. I, I don't think it really helped me too much. No, I think what it did was it just kind of cranked up, you know, the issues that I was already having with, you know, not being able to focus, you know, and just made me even more kind of like hyper with, with everything going on, to be honest with you. I mean, they're, they're stimulants. Yeah, it seems to be the case, right? Like, um, uh, it, it, they did work on my nieces, um, at least one. I, I, I'm not sure about the other if she was on it or not, but I know one did well on it. But, like, my brother yeah. was on it, too, because, you know, he was adult ADD or whatever. If, if you've, you listen to Brian at all, you know this. Um, right. But when he was, but he was on, not on Ritalin, you know, he was on Adderall. And um, mm -hmm. I, when he was on Adderall, though, man, that guy just talked like 100 miles an hour and just would not stop. <laughs> And I was like, I don't, I don't, I don't think this works. Like, I don't think this is making you concentrate. You know what I mean? Like, it, it seems it's like, not, right. it's not it's like all that stuff does or something. Right. 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 All that stuff does is just ramps up adrenaline and then dopamine receptors go through the roof and stuff. So like technically like ADHD is supposed to be combated when you have uh low dopamine levels. So you don't actually get, you know, satisfaction from doing homework or doing stuff. So like technically like the, the thought behind it is, well, get them on stimulus so that they actually get, you know, positive feedback from getting work done, mm, you know? So, you. so, so they, since it's such a broad, broad brush when they paint it with people, you know, I, I feel like there's a lot of people who get on that stuff and then, you know, they don't really have low dopamine, you know, they just, they just, their attention is other places, right. which is kind of where, where I was. Interesting. Just interesting. I mean, I've never tried it. I've never been on it. I was just curious, you know, that's, that's interesting. Um, okay, yeah. so uh, you transition then um, to middle school, um, yep. which, which I think is the hardest time in life because you're going through the you know the whole changes, and you you got one, some kids that are like basically adults, like hello, I'm Steve, you know, and then you got <laughs> other ones yeah. that are still children, you know. You guys, guys want to play toys, you know, and, and so it's like right. it's a it's just an awful experience at that point. So, <laughs> yeah. did, did you have middle school or junior high? I always ask. I, that. I had middle school. Okay. I had middle school and I transitioned to a public school at first. And then that kind of, you know, that devolved into my parents, like basically saying, okay, we got to get him out of here because the same issues that he was having in elementary school are happening now. Okay. So after my first year of middle school, I wound up actually being transferred to a very, very tiny private school with about 40 people in my, in my actual class that I wound up actually seeing through high school and graduating. Wow. Well, yeah, that's so, uh, yeah. Yeah, not not to jump too far ahead, but I mean, yeah, it, middle school was definitely one of those kind of transition periods where I went from a small uh, or just, you know, like an average size elementary school, and then then you're in this group with a ton of ton of kids and then I got pulled out of there and then pushed into a new environment. What did you um I mean, what did you think about that? Like when you went to such a smaller, like more private school, like, you know, what did, you know, kids don't want to lose their friends and all that kind of thing. But 
Like, um, how was that transition for you? To be honest with you, I was actually kind of excited about it because just naturally, whenever I have like a new situation, I usually kind of like, no matter what, ever since I was a kid, I just see kind of like the positive aspect of it. So I was just kind of excited to like get in a new environment, meet new people. Um, middle school was fine. I mean, I like the, I like the people that I was hanging out with, but again, there was nothing like super solid or stable in my life at that time. So going over to the private school was just something different. And initially, you know, I was, I was really pumped up about it, to be honest with you. And did your, um, did your grades improve being in the private school? Yeah, a little bit, to be honest, uh, things went up a little bit better just because I got a lot more one-on-one time. And I feel like because, uh, my, not only were my parents paying, you know, basically a college tuition for me to go to a high school, um, you know, the, the type of teachers that you get in there are a lot more, you know, they're a lot more motivated to actually figure out what unique issues you're going through and trying to work with you. So even though I still didn't, you know, I still wasn't focused on school, you know, and I didn't really enjoy it too much. Things got better just because I was, I, there was more attention yeah. given to me. Yeah. Were you, um, so when, you, when you're dealing with the, when you're struggling with these, um, you know, um, homeworks and AD, ADD or whatever, um, were you mm-hmm. in the office a lot or was it just mostly just reflected in grades? I mean, were you like, kind of like they're ca- calling your parents and being like, he's in here again. He's he threw things at the chalkboard or whatever. You know what I mean? Like, um, bad kid or were you just uh just struggling with homework uh i mean i was like back back when i was in middle school i was like playing basketball all the time you know so i was just i was just focused on like going outside playing basketball doing stuff like that so if anything i would get in trouble because you know i'd i'd be late to class or you know like i would hyper like I don't know how to describe it but i would just optimize my day around the free periods that i had to go out and do stuff You know, so that that was kind of at odds with, you know, the school and they're obviously super strict and you have people watching you every, you know, wherever you go. So I had I had a little bit, but I never did anything, anything bad. Were you um, you you said you walked to elementary school. Was that the case with this private school or did you have to take a bus or were you being dropped off by your folks or? Yeah, I would have to get dropped off. There was no bus. So I would just get dropped off by my grandpa and my dad one of the two. And yeah, that's how I started my day in, in middle school. Yeah, that's probably better than walking. I mean, Milwaukee, I say, at least yeah. you guys get snow like we do. And it's probably, uh, Oh yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. It's terrible. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for sure. So ridiculous. Yeah. Um, okay. So, uh, middle school. Okay. How, how was the, how was your friend situation? You say you're playing basketball, you know, did you have a lot of friends or like, how did that work out for you? Yeah, I mean, if anything, you could call it class clown. I at at, the, at that point in time, all I was trying to do was just uh, make good friendships, put my best self forward, whatever it was. So I was just trying to, you know, modify my personality to fit everybody else. So in general, like I just had a lot of I had a lot of people that would hang out with me and would do stuff, but it was nothing like, you know, it it wasn't actual like genuine friendships. I don't think I really developed many genuine friendships when I was younger. And part of that has to do with just like my lifestyle at home, especially during that time. You know, my parents, they were very kind of restrictive and they tried to lock down a lot of the stuff that I did. So I wasn't able to actually get outside of the classroom and meet and hang out with these people. It was was really only during, you know, the school hours that we would hang out. So that kind of like limited me from actually like getting to know anyone and really kind of developing some some good friendships that I would even have today. I, I don't really talk to anybody that I used to, you know, know even back in high school or middle school, to be honest with you. Sure. No. Makes sense. Me, me neither. Yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. Um mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so uh so you transition into high school. Uh yeah. and also private? Yeah, yeah. So the high school was an extension of the actual middle school. It was a different building, but it was on the campus. So you kind of you know, this, this academy that I went to, they had a lower school, middle school, and they called it upper school. So, you know, you go to you go to middle school, you're at one building, you move up and then you're in the in the high school building. Lower school. This is right. This sounds, this sounds terrible. Right. You know? I know. I know. You just go to lower yeah. school. <laughs> you're in lower school. But Get but it. funny thing about middle school, too. I mean, that's when I actually started listening to you guys. Ah, um, mine, corrupting kids that are that's where it started. Yeah. 
you, you know, corrupting or, you know, giving me a different perspective on life. Like, because again, like I kind of lived in a box, you know, my parents, they didn't let me do a lot of different stuff. So <laughs> my, my, my escape was just kind of podcasting forums, video games. And that's kind of how, you know, that's, that's honestly how I got, got to listen to you guys. His, his escape was listening to Brian Baird tell stuff. <laughs> it was. <laughs> I'm, I'm so sorry. It was. I'm so, so sorry. <laughs> It's, um, you know, I, I, I can relate because, you know, when I was, uh, in, in ninth grade, when I was entering ninth grade for the first time, I had moved to California to live with my mother and my brother who was supposed to go had joined the Navy. So I was there by myself and I, you know, I knew my mom, but not well enough that I was like, um, uh, ready to be entering my teens as her, as my, as my parent. And, uh, I didn't know anybody, you know I mean? I'm in Los Angeles. Uh, you know, it took me a while to make friends. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm an easygoing guy. I can like kind of hang out with people, you know what I mean? But you start to hang right. out with people initially and you're just after a while, you're like, yeah, this guy's crazy. I can't keep hanging out with this guy, you know? Mm-hmm. And then, so you hang out with somebody else until you find like the right people that, you know, th- that are actually your people. But I, I spent a lot of time, like, that's when I got introduced to like, um, modems on like a uh, Commodore 64 and to connect to bulletin board systems and to mm-hmm. communicate with people on the outside because I was just constantly, um, trapped inside my house, you know, and it was like, um, there was this whole other world of people that you could talk to. So I kind of understand right. it, you know, it's a different, it's a different reflection of what you're doing, you know, but you're, you're, mm-hmm. you, it's like an escape in a way you're, you're, but you're learning about the real world from, uh, people that maybe are a little bit more like yourself rather than, I don't know the role models that they want you to pay attention to. So, right. Exactly. Yeah. And that's like 2006 before social media really was even kicking off. I mean, Facebook was around and stuff, but I mean, not nothing like obviously like we are today where, you know, you can communicate and talk to whoever the hell you want. Right. Right. Yeah. Phones didn't have all of the, you know, what the, you know, we know. Um, Right. Right. (laughs) Okay. So uh, in, in high school then, um, uh, are you playing like basketball on like the team or something or what, what, what happens there? Well, yeah, in high school, I wasn't playing basketball on the team. I love basketball. I actually signed up for football. Oh, and okay. at that time, at that time I was five, 10, 140 pounds. And everybody thought I was going to quit the team, you know, because I was just way too small. And part of that has to do with, you know, back, back with the Ritalin and, you know, the stuff that they were putting me on, which, you know, can actually, ramp up metabolism and just make it impossible for you to actually like develop properly. Oh, so, so, so back at, back at high school, yeah, I played football and I loved it. It was great. Uh, but I was kind of like, uh, I don't know, like just a, a special player that would only come in every once in a while. Nothing, nothing crazy, no varsity, none of that. I was just, I was just there cause I like, I wanted something to do and I enjoyed it. I always wonder about the politics of that kind of thing. Like, you know, is it, are the kids that are sitting out because, you know, that you're, you're not as good as these other kids, or is it because those kids that play more have the more vocal parent that's like in the coach's face all the time being like, you better oh, make my it. son play the game, you know? Oh, that's it. A hundred percent. And especially <laughs> right. that's exactly, I mean, we're talking about high school kids, especially at a private school, like a division six, if we're actually talking about high school level, like a very low you know, level school, all the athletic ability of everybody on the team is, is pretty similar, right, you know? Right. So, <laughs> so when you have the principal, you know, the principal has a son who goes to the school. Well, he's going to be the point guard of the basketball team and the quarterback uh, of the football <laughs> team at the same time. And right. that's not even a joke. That's oh, exactly, that's nice. exactly how it went. Super. Yeah. Jack. Yeah. <laughs> right. Right. So it, it definitely has a lot to do with the parents and especially at a small school like that, you know, with a lot of rich parents there, you know, there's, there's certain kids who have more vocal parents and they come in and they, they, they chat a little bit. So how, how are you doing? You know, it, it sounds like school was kind of rough for you in a way, like were you, you know, because your home life was kind of constrained um, right. and your, your schoolwork was just sort of average, let's say. And, um, mm-hmm. you know, you were enjoying football though. So you, you had that, but it seems like you were a little bit, um, uh, unexposed there. Were, were you depressed a lot or were you just, were, was this mostly just rolling off of you? Like I was constantly depressed in high school. I think there was like oh, a funeral yeah. dirge following me wherever right. I walked. Let me tell you about Kevin Baird in high school. <laughs> <laughs> 
So, um, yeah. So you were you were kind of bummed out most of the time, or you know? Oh yeah. Of, okay. Oh yeah. I mean, like, one of my and this is kind of sad thinking about it, but like for for the longest time, one of my favorite things to do was just go to sleep. You know, because it was just like that was the only time where I could just kind of like be by myself and just not have any of the yeah, responsibilities, yeah. Donnie and hates pressure sleeping. from. All of oh. that stuff. Yeah. Now, now I can't do it, but I mean, back then, <laughs> you know, <laughs> Don, Don could sleep anywhere. And I saw him sleep on an aluminum chair once, you know, it doesn't have any armrests or anything. And he's just passed out in one of those yeah, right. folding aluminum chairs. And I'm just like, that's concrete. I, <laughs> it's like impossible. Yeah, like, sidewalks. It doesn't, yeah. It's anywhere. Just anywhere. I believe Steel it. Mills. I believe it. From while driving. I don't know. Somehow. Oh, totally while driving. I almost ran into a semi once. It was the worst. <laughs> On the highway, you just wake up. And you're just like, "What the? Why is my foot still on the gas?" Anyways, so yeah, crazy. and that's the funny thing too about high school is that like my grades were bad. You know, I wasn't really paying attention in in class that much. But hey, you know, we had we had college advisors. You know, somebody who was actually specifically appointed to us to make sure that we actually got into school because one of the big, you know, selling points of this high school that I went to is that 99% of everybody gets into college. So that I think that was why my parents sent me there. And the funny thing was, is in standardized, like in those SAT, ACT, I actually did, you know, amazing in those. I think my ACT, I got like a 30 on it hmm. while I was holding like C's and D's in almost all my classes. And uh, it actually caused the the administrators of the school to just like hate me because they're like, like what are you doing? Like they were expecting, they were expecting something terrible, and it wow. actually turned out I knew what I was. Well, I didn't know what I was doing, but I was actually smarter than I thought. Maybe you were bored. I mean, maybe you were smart. You just were bored with the the curriculum. You know, like right. um, sometimes I think that's maybe how I was because I obviously yeah. was hit with an alien ray at some point, um, <laughs> and and became smarter than I should be. Uh, but no, I I th sometimes think that it was m more of the fact that like school is so like you just you go and it's like, oh, I don't want to be here, you know? And then the teacher's like, map, 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 map for like 40 minutes yeah. or whatever. And you're just like, what do I have to, just tell me what I got to do to get out of here. You know? I never saw the point of it. Right. I never saw the point of it. Right. I'm like, why am I learning about, you know, I don't know, like, like Ulysses S. Grant, like how is this practical or, or, right. or even like mathematics, like certain equations and stuff. It's just like, I'm never going to use this in my life. And I knew it, you know, because right. I don't like it. I, I didn't like to do it. So I'm like, I, I, if, it, if I'm going to find a way to make any money in life, it's going to be not this, you know, no, so. knowing all these various dates was always the worst. Like, I just like, that's, I'm going to fail that question right there. Like what year was X, yeah. Y, and Z or something? You know, when was the new deal or something? I don't, I don't have any idea. I just give well it before my time. That's what yeah. I would say. I I'd always put in stupid answers. Right. And it's just mainly about, yeah, re you know, it's about repetition and memorization and not so much about um, practicality uh, of using the knowledge that you have. And uh, right. that, you know, I, I think a lot of people suffered because of that, because, you know, uh, memorization, I don't mm -hmm. know, it doesn't get used that often in work. Yeah, you got to remember how to do your job, of course, but you actually have to like, <laughs> you have to be nimble on your feet usually with most jobs. Right. You know? I mean, if you're just, you're not going to just be an assembly line guy doing the same thing over and over again. Most people right. have to like, you know, do some sort of, um, you know, using their brains and being somewhat creative in just about anything they do. So, right, um, right. you know, anyway, I'm going to get on a big retort about school, but maybe that'll be a future home blast episode. <laughs> and we'll talk about, let me just tell you about Kevin Baird in school. No. <laughs> <laughs> that'll be a, that'll be a Donnie, uh, what, what is it? Donnie, uh, Donnie tumble, 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 yeah, Donnie, Donnie, tumble and tail, tail, tumble tail, tumble tail. Uh, okay. So, um, still in high school though. Um, did you date? No, no, I was a, I was a late bloomer in almost every aspect of my life, which actually led to a lot of chaotic situations as soon as I got out of high school. But again, like I was saying, I, uh, I didn't have a cell phone. I didn't have a phone until I could purchase one, one myself, you know, which mm, I guess isn't yeah. too, which isn't too common. Uh, at least back then, you know, I'm going yeah. to a school with all these rich kids. Everybody's got a phone. Everybody's talking to each other, doing stuff. I didn't do any of that. You know, I had a strict, you know, bedtime of like 9 p.m. Hmm. every single day all through high school. Wow. You know, so I was just really I was I was really locked down in almost every aspect of my life, you know, after after school. So it kind of prevented me from even dating, you know, developing any sort of like healthy relationships with, with women. None of that stuff. It didn't happen. Yeah, see that? I remember. <laughs> do you remember? It was crazy. Kevin? 
I don't know if Kevin remembers this, but like back in high school, I mean, I got, I got in trouble for a lot of stuff, but yeah, the, Kevin would come over. He'd be, he'd call me. I'd be like, Hey, we're going to go cruise around or whatever for a couple hours. And I'd be like, all right. And he'd be like, we'll come get you. And he'd come get me. It'd be like five thirty, six o'clock at night. And I'd come out and I'd be like, all right, well, I got to be back in an hour. <laughs> and he'd be like, yeah, be like, right. Well, Everybody in the car is just like, what? And it's like, that's what my parents said. I got to be home by like seven. And it's just like, what, what are you talking about? You got to be home. It's like, listen, either go without me <laughs> or bring me back at seven. I, that's that's right. just nice. So I feel your pain. I, right. I got I got lucky if my dad if my dad was watching Whose Line Is It Anyway and that extended past 930, I could stay up and watch it with him. That That's literally as bad as it got. Hmm. Yeah, my my dad had just you know he had just given up. Like, and like we were just at a point when I was about fifteen, I think, where it was just over at that point. Like, all parental guidance was gone. Like, you just do whatever you yeah. want. He's just basically like, you do whatever you want, but just so you know, when you turn eighteen and you're done with high school, you're you're out of here. You know what I mean? And so that's the right. that just puts the fear in you. You're just like, well, now what am I gonna do? I gotta pay rent. You know, I gotta like get pay for a, like my own bills and stuff. I don't have anywhere to go. Right. So it's right. not like my brother was like, yeah, you can stay with me. That God, that would have been a nightmare if that ever happened for me. So, mm-hmm. I mean, I, I had to just, yeah, I had to get a job <laughs> and struggle and, and, and try to make it. So that was another thing yeah. in my life where the school was just secondary to the fact that like, look, I just got to get a job so I can survive, you know? And, I'm with you on and, that. Right? Yeah. And, and, and that's exactly how it was for me. Yeah. And, and not, not to cut you off. No, sorry, go ahead. I, yeah. But, 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 uh, yeah, I mean, like for me, it was kind of like the opposite. Like my parents, if anything, they wanted me to stay, but I, I wanted to do the like, like the exact opposite. I think I got my first job at sixteen, and then I started paying rent and you know living by myself from eighteen until now. So it was there just one of those things where I was just like, I got to get out of here, uh, and I got to start actually, you know, living my life and putting putting steps on the ground to actually start developing all this stuff that you know I I wasn't able to do. Yeah, no, I hear you. It, it 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 was a struggle when I did it, and and um, yeah, it was. Um, uh, I don't know. It caused a lot of issues you, in my life. But uh, go on. Yep. You, I think you did. I think you did all right, Kevin. Because I mean, other than the fact that if I came to visit you, all you'd ask me to do is take trash to the dumpster. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like. He may not have known what was going on, but he had like anytime anybody came over, he's like, "You need to take trash to the dumpster." It's like, oh, you, know, you got ulterior motives over here. Like, you, right? Look at you, smart guy here, hanging out. You got to take the trash out. Um, right. yeah, but uh, yeah, I, it was you know, it was it was weird. But anyway, okay. <laughs> did you go to prom though? Yeah, I did. I did. Uh, I actually I asked this this Finnish girl out. She was from Finland. She was gorgeous. And uh, she actually said no. And she wound up going with my other friends. So uh, at the time, at the, at the time, I just went to prom by myself. And then I wound up actually uh, dancing with one of my other friends dates. So it was a it was a very interesting time. Wow. Did you go home with your friends date? That would have been. No, dude. Oh. I, I wish, <laughs> you know, but. Again, where am I going to take her? Am I going to take her back to my parents? No, you know, like, no, that's I, not going to happen. I know. <laughs> uh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, uh, <laughs> um. Okay. So, uh, high school, and you were working. Where were you working? Yeah. So I, I started my first job. It was a bagger at a a grocery yeah. store. Same and, thing uh, I did. Uh, yeah, I stayed there for like like four or five years and they tried to, they tried to move me, move me up. They're like, Dan, you've been here for so long. Let's, let's get you to be a cashier. I was like, no, I like what I'm doing. You know? So, so my first job, I was just, I was just, you know, pushing carts around, you know, bagging groceries. And then after that, you know, towards mid high school, I got a job at Best Buy where I was uh, selling computers. And that actually turned, that actually turned out to be, you know, probably one of the best jobs of my life in terms of like setting the course and getting me, you know, socialize because, you know, I learned how to sell. I knew what I was selling. And you were you doing know, that in high was... school or is this after high school? No, high this school. is after high school, right? Um, no, it's, it's high school. Oh, it's still high school. Okay. Yep. Yep. Wow. So, just like you. so yeah, well, I wasn't, I can't sell anything to anybody because I'm too no. honest. Like, I'm not saying that you have to be dishonest <laughs> to sell stuff, but I mean, I, I, do. I just feel bad, of, you know, with but people if, like, if... go ahead. I was going to say, if you think about it, though, remember, we we would go to Sears after school. Well, right. Yeah. And, and you would have all those games. You'd be like, come on, we're going to play on these computers. And I'd be like, we can't do that. They're going to throw us out. And you'd be like, nah, they like it because we help the people sell computers. <laughs> Pretty much, <laughs> right? 
I mean, it was so I would just stand like there was no chair. You just stand there for hours until the mall closed. And I was trading oh, yeah. games with the security guard that worked there because he he saw me on the camera. And uh, Don Anderson's brother's wife uh, was like working in the same section that I was in or something. But they never bothered me. They never cared what I was doing. Like I could just I brought my own joystick and my own games and sat down yeah. in front of the as I didn't have one at the time. I sat down in front of the computer. Well, I didn't sit. I stood in front of it and I just played games there like all evening or whatever most of the time, unless we had some place to go or do or something. So right. bizarre, right? Man. Um, yeah, such a nerd. Uh, but, I, used, um, I used to do that. I used to do that in the public library. You know, I just go find a computer in there and play flash games. <laughs> oh, there you go. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, we just had. We didn't have any computers in the library. Well, I don't. Did we have computer? No, not even no. the good ones. Well, that's it, the thing is, we had, you'd have to go to the computer class. In California, there, there was a public library that my brother and I we would walk up to when we would visit our mother. Um, in the, uh, um, late eighties, uh, well, no, excuse me. Um, in the early eighties and, um, they had an Atari, it was like an Atari 400 or something computer. If, if that's such a thing, cause I don't remember it. Um, and it, it had one of them, uh, things where you put coins in and like a, almost like a laundromat thing where you put like, like two quarters in and then you push that thing in and it would take the two quarters and then you got like an hour of computer time like that's how it was at that library Damn. like and then i don't know what you were going to do with it because you know it, it wasn't like there was an internet or right. um and computers weren't really that great like you know they weren't going to do your homework or anything it was just so so no one was ever using it or anything I'm not sure if we had a computer in the North Olmsted library at all. I don't recall there being one. No. Yeah. We barely had them uh, microfilmers, the, the microfilmers. Yeah. I never really understood how those work. I mean, I do now, but back then I was like, ah, oh, it's a mystery. They didn't like it. They didn't like kids touching half the stuff anyway. You know what I mean? Half the time you just spin the wheel and then just like stop it somewhere and be like, okay, what are we looking at? Right. Right. Yeah. Or um, you would. Um, you, you, you want to check out something because you're doing homework and you'd like try to check out an encyclopedia or something. You'd be like, can I take out L? <laughs> like, no, you can't take an encyclopedia. <laughs> All right. Fine. I got homework to M? do. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Can I take M out? Okay. So, uh, okay. So you went to prom and you graduated. And then, uh, so you, you, you said basically they were going to make sure you went to college. So did you go yep. to college? Yes, I did. So I got a, I got a bunch of scholarships actually to almost all the schools that I, I applied for. But again, that would kind of prove to be worthless because I'm, you know, I'm really going to school not to learn. I'm just trying to like, you know, experience life, you know. So that was kind of like my main goal when even picking a school. So I want to pick in this uh, liberal arts school that had just a ton of uh, nurses in it. It was mainly a nursing school oh, for, that, that for sounds, girls. That sounds horrible. I don't know what you're <laughs> Do with right. Right. So, <laughs> so that, that was, that was how I picked the school. I was like, okay, well, this school has a ton of girls. I'm going to go here and I know I'm going to be away from home. So now I can kind of do what I want to do, you know? So yeah, that sounds good. That's, that's how I picked it. And, Pretty and smart. so when you were away from home, how far away did, what was this from home? It's about a half hour, not oh, too okay. far, it's not too far, but you know, I convinced them. I was like, I need to live on school. I can't I live on campus. I can't. Yeah, I can't there be, you I go. Be living there. So that had to be a night and day difference for you, right? I mean, all of a sudden you could stay out late and stuff. Were you just getting tired though at like eight thirty? You're like, I was gonna go back. I'm really tired. <laughs> no, no, the opposite. <laughs> the opposite. I was just, I was just up. You know, I was doing everything, like anything and everything that you can do. You know, normally, like I look at high school as like that's a good period where people kind of get the demons out of their system or whatever, you know, or at least it starts, you know, you can right. actually have some like life experiences. You kind of know what you're getting into. I just kind of jumped into the deep end and just did everything at once, you mm -hmm. know? So my, my first year in college, you know, first time I started drinking, you know, all of that stuff, like every, everything, everything happened at once. Wow. <laughs> and the whole time our voices are in the background. He's like, yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> right, yeah. Said, this would be okay. Now, um, yeah. We've had Jason Korber on the show, and especially Donnie, you've had him on a million times on um, Tumblin. Um, yeah. uh, and he sort of had a similar fate in the sense of, well, I don't know fate, but similar situation where he yeah. was very controlled by his mother when he was in high school 
you know, and, and earlier. Yes. And uh, then he went off to college in Toledo. And mm-hmm. I think he did not go to class ever. I think he joined a fraternity and just drank. And yeah. I think he came back like half a year later or something. And um, yep. was uh, just, it was a complete wash, basically, of him. Even That's going exactly there. what happened to me. Okay. That's literally exactly <laughs> what happened to me. I joined I joined a fraternity. Uh, and then I was, I was out after the first semester with mononucleosis because uh-huh. I was just, you know, running around doing whatever. You know, and kissing, then the kissing I, disease. So you're just right yeah. kissing everybody like, oh. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But again, it was just it was just because, you know, like I, I, I looked at it, I'm like, what's the easiest way for me to get to know people? You know, it's it's this fraternity right here. Going to join it, going to see what happens. And then obviously, you know, a negative outcome at the end for after the first semester. <laughs> sure. So so um, uh, were, were you know, were you dating then when you were in high school or college? Oh, yeah. Like basically after like the first week or two, you know, I wound up getting a quote unquote girlfriend, at least what I thought was a girlfriend at the time, you know, basically just because, you know, it's my first chance to actually like get my own time with people in general. Sure. You know, so so that, that you know, basically the first thing I did there, you know, was was just find a girl and then just start dating her, you know. <laughs> wise man there you go like a caveman he just goes walking around literally and finds some chick and grabs yeah, her he's like you're gonna date literally me. that's exactly it Probably. that's exactly yeah. how it went uh, uh okay and so you were working at this time too or did you stop working when you went to school i i stayed working i was still working at best buy because again you know i needed money i needed to uh you know support myself i was paying to actually to, to live there. My dad wouldn't pay it. My parents wouldn't pay it, hmm. you know? So I was just basically riding through the, you know, the scholarship and then, you know, financially supporting myself with this part-time job at Best Buy. Now with that, um, did you like that job? I loved it. It was great, yeah. you know, cause, cause, uh, you know, you just meet all sorts of different types of people, you know, even like, Brewers baseball players, they come to our store and they they purchase computers. So we actually had uh, an interesting fact was uh, the number two selling computer department in the entire ecosystem of Best Buy in general. So wow. uh, just just based on that location, there's just a lot of, uh, you know, families, a lot of wealthy families in that area. So that, that store in general did really well. So it was really good for me to just, you know, talk to people and then just learn how to sell. And, you know, it kind of, it kind of just was, you know, Uh, did you have a, did you have a pitch? You know, like they said, like, this is what you're supposed to say. And, and these are the things you're supposed to, you know, um, respond with, or was it basically all uh, organic from you yourself? I would say all organic, you know, because I knew a lot about computers. You know, there's always that evil side of selling where you kind of if you know too much, you can just kind of work people up to, uh, you know, get something maybe they don't need. So that was kinda, that was kind of like how I did it, you know. So I I look at somebody, they'd be getting like, you know, an I3 or they'd be looking at something like that for their daughter. And then I just kind of work them up and and try and try and sell a better computer with a, with a protection plan, you know. So. Sure. You know, we we had our own system. You know, we had a Verizon rep who would come in and then they give us kind of guidelines on how to sell hotspots, you know, and there were like perks associated with different types of items that you sold, Mm -hmm. you know, so that that was kind of like the motivating factor for me. So I looked at it and I was like, hey, if I sell like five Verizon hotspots, I get two years of free Verizon coverage on my phone you're letting so, out, you're letting out the secrets now so like a blowgun dart is going to hit you from it's behind. fine <laughs> yeah. i don't know if they do this anymore but this was back then so so we literally had like a rep come in and they, they were like hey you know if you sell x amount of hot spots you can get your own plan for free with us so you know stuff like that would happen and then that would motivate us to sell you know x y or z whatever it was interesting interesting yeah um yeah, I've I've heard that they don't have um you didn't get uh commissions or something, but I don't know if that was true. Um they would always kind of tell you that. I don't get commission on any of this, but now I'm going to waste <laughs> 40 minutes of your time talking about why you right. should buy this policy and stuff. And we did though. We yeah. we got, you know, it it wasn't it wasn't actual like commission based on our individual performance, but if the actual department, you know, exceeded a certain metric, you know, everybody got like a, a kind of like a broad spread you know, like a broad bonus, you know? So with us being, you know, like one of the top 
computer teams in the whole country for Best Buy, you know, every month, everybody did good. So it was just kind of like a, a motivating factor where everybody was just competed with each other to sell. And then the bonus was just kind of like, you know, that was just extra. Okay. Uh, and so are you, are you still there? Or no, you moved on? No, or? no. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That, that, you know, I left that job probably towards, you know, middle to, to end of college where I kind of got into more of, uh, you know, what I'm doing right now, which is graphic design and marketing. You're in a graphic design job right now, or you're trying to get into one? I mean, I'm sorry. Uh, no, yeah. So I started. I started with graphic design, and now I'm now I've kind of turned towards the more marketing side. So uh, right around the midpoint of of college, I actually wound up uh, transferring schools, and then at the second school, I wound up getting a, a graphic design job with the school it's, with with the school itself. Oh, okay. So, All right. Cool. You know, that kind of laid the foundation for my career from then until now. Okay, so well, are you still working for the school? Is that what you're saying, or or did you? Train? Oh no. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> but but you know, it kind of like you know, there's certain moments in your life that kind of set you on a course. And right. I had no I had no clue what I wanted to do, and eventually, you know, I got this job, and I realized, hey, there's a professional application to this. So it kind of set me down that that track of design and marketing. Okay. Okay. And so then how did that transition? What, what, what happened there? Did you just get the, the job you have now or what? what I'm yeah. Kidding. So okay. yeah. <laughs> sorry. Yeah. I'm, I'm not bad. sure where that, yeah, I'm, I'm not, yeah. <laughs> because then the next yeah. you'd be like, and then I became a pirate and I was on the seven <laughs> seas. What? I'm sorry. No, go ahead. Sorry. Yeah. So, so yeah, I, I worked at this job. I was, I was doing actual, actual graphic design and, you know, that kind of like I, I saw that and I was like, hey, there, there's money to be made here. I'm actually making money here. I'm good at it. And, uh, you know, I got my first corporate job after that at, at, at Kohl's department store. Oh, very cool. You know, so I wound up doing graphic design for them. Uh, Did they pay you for, in Kohl's cash or they just kind of <laughs> some, I'm just kidding. No, <laughs> not, none of that. None of that. But it was kind of like assembly line graphic design. You mm, know, a sure. lot of those a lot of those entry level jobs you know that just give you like here these are the five pages that you need to work on and then you just gotta maintain those pages so i did that for a couple of years hopped around and did more graphic design jobs i think i did like two or three more and then eventually i wound up being uh you know getting into the marketing side which is kind of where i am today where i combine the graphic design and the marketing into uh you know what i'm doing right now so it's it's been, uh, you know, when I look back and I look back to, back to college, uh, that first job, you know, working in graphic design is really what kind of set my direction in terms of like professionally where I want to go. Marketing has always kind of been interesting to me in the sense that it's 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 kind of like sales, but it's not sales. And it's kind of like PR, but yeah. it's not PR. It's, it's kind of in the yeah. middle there. And, um, you know, it, but it's like... Uh, you make a lot of campaigns. Is that what you're doing or? Um, yeah. Okay. Exactly. Exactly. So today what I do is, you know, I have a list of people, you know, kind of like an email list and, you know, it, I kind of combine everything that I was good at in the past. So you, like you said, you know, there's the sales side that I kind of cultivated from Best Buy, which is just learning how to, you know, discover what people want and then, you know, trying to like hook them in, you right. know, so really what I do today is, you know, I have a list of, you know, I would say a hundred thousand people that I send month, you know, bi-weekly email campaigns to, you know, and then we build a marketing funnel around trying to get those people into clients, you know? So that's kind of like on a very surface level, you know, that's, that's what I focus on today. So it's a combination of graphic design, you know, because I do all of the, all of the design for the email campaigns and then, you know, the actual marketing strategy on top to try and hook those people in, you know, so it's, it's kind of like a combination of Best Buy, you know, my first, my first marketing job over at, uh, you know, my, the second school that I went to. And, you know, that just kind of got better and better over time to uh, where I am right now. Interesting. Okay. So you seem to be enjoying it. You seem like you're in a good spot. It sounds like but in the tone of your voice, you're not like, I hate yeah. my boss and it's the worst. Oh, thing. I love it. Worst choice yeah. I ever made in my life is taking this job. 
Um, so what, what is the, uh, you know, we're at, uh, 55 minutes here. So what is the, right. um, what is the next step then? What is your, what's your long-term plan? You know, long-term plan. I just kind of want to keep doing what I'm doing right now and seeing where it leads. You know, this has been, you know, my life has actually changed dramatically over the last two years, ever since I got this, this new job and, uh, you know, it's going great and we're growing at a, probably the big, the, the fastest rate the company's ever grown. And part of that's because of what I've been doing on the marketing side. So, great. you know, I'm not, I'm not in a, I'm not in a real rush to change anything. And, uh, you know, right now our company's actually, like I was saying earlier, it's based out of, I don't know if I was saying earlier or not, but it's based out of Orlando and they're trying to get me to move out there, but, um, I'm just taking it one step at a time and just, just enjoying the journey so far. So long-term plan, I, I always want to be in marketing. I want to be doing something that, you know, similar to what I'm doing right now, but hopefully with the same place and we're just going to keep on trying to grow it and see where it goes. What about, um, uh, personal life, married kids, what would you like to do? Oh man, <laughs> I would say, I mean, married one day, maybe probably not, you know, I'm, I'm dating somebody right now that, uh, you know, dating a great girl, but she's also in, you know, finishing up college right now. So she's younger than me. Uh, so again, similar to that, similar to what I'm doing professionally, you know, I'm waiting to see what happens with that too. So I'm just kind of in a, in a position now where I'm just kind of letting things play out and, uh, you know, I'm just going to keep working hard and seeing where it goes. No, it makes sense. I mean, you're at that age and, and, you know, but you, you know, some people go, oops, it uh, looks like you're pregnant. I guess we're getting married. You know, so it sounds like you've managed to avoid <laughs> None of that. Yeah. yeah. You, <laughs> you've managed to avoid that. So that's, that's excellent. Um, right. uh, you know, and then I, but I do know other people that have had like, they kind of want to mimic their parents, right? So they want to have the house mm -hmm. and the kids and the family and, you know, the b backyard barbecue and, and that whole thing. And, right. you know, that's just their life's goal is basically to, you know, become like a, 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 a copy of their folks. You know, I mean, they have their own personality. I mean, I'm not knocking it. You know, I'm just saying like right. their, their, their dream is the, you know, to, to have that same thing that their parents had. And, um, yeah, you sound like more like one of us in the sense of, uh, right. we're very, we're, we're much more, um, we'll see what, whatever the hell happens and hope we can survive through it. That's, <laughs> <laughs> that's, yeah, that's literally how I approach almost everything. It's just like, whatever's working, double down on it and then, and, the, and then go with it. You know, I don't have any, you know, big expectations of, you know, trying to put some, some ideal vision of what my future is going to be. I'm just going to, you know, do the best I can right now. Uh, okay. Last question. Um, first game console. Oh man, that was, uh, that was definitely the game boy advance. So that was the first one I got. Uh, so you went blind at an early age, trying to look at the <laughs> non backlit screen of the game. Yeah. The game boy advance. Just... And I bought it. I, I bought it with uh snow shoveling money again. I never got, you know, I wanted video games. I wanted all that stuff when I was story younger. of my life, never, my friend, Absolutely. never could get it. <laughs> yeah. So, so I got the game boy advance, you know, super Mar like Mario Kart played it on there. And, you know, I, I love that. I love that console. I still have it. At least you and, got a good uh, console. Like you didn't end up being like, yeah. I'm going to bet everything on the Atari Lynx. That sounds like the way <laughs> that's the future right there. And then get sick. Yeah. This, dream, uh, this Dreamcast is going somewhere. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Right. I didn't have to go through 200 consoles like you to find one that <laughs> right. I like. Find, find that right one. Uh, right. Right. What Kevin did. You found the right one. See, that's okay, all because that of was Kevin. part of it. Uh, Donnie, of it. did you well, want to I'm tell sorry. us your brother's story before they wrap it up? You said you had a funny story about your brother. You want to tell us about? Said, oh, uh, because we're talking about we're talking about how we we annoyed, yeah, annoying they can be. Yeah, he goes. So my brother's out of town. He always he's always going. This is my oldest brother, the bricklayer. He's always going out of town because there's no work in Cleveland, so he's got to go somewhere for like three months and stuff. So he was in Alabama this whatever a week ago this past week. <clears throat> he he slipped and fell, or he tripped on something, and he broke his ribs. Wow. Uh, work, Ouch. Working in it. Work, yes. And working in a steel mill. So there's no, that's him done. He can't be lifting bricks and stuff. Damn. He gets, he gets out to his car and his car blew up. It, uh, Maybe like blew up. Motor, like, it like, just... the, like the motor, the motor blew. It like stopped working. It was just like, <laughs> wow. You know, so now he's like in Alabama. He lives in Cleveland and, uh, <laughs> he's broke, he got broken ribs, got broken truck. And he's like, ah. So what does he do? He calls me. He's like, hey, uh, <laughs> I need you to do me a favor. 
the 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 dealership down there is trying to charge him like six thousand dollars to fix his truck he's like i can get it towed back up there to my dude get it fixed much cheaper i was like oh, okay and and he goes i just need you to take my, i need you to go get a lot of money and take it to this dude and i'm just like what <laughs> like like how am i gonna get it? so anyways he gets my mom involved i get money from my mom i go to i go to this is the kind of thing that we were talking about. Like my brother gets this, gets me involved in. It's like, it's a simple process. It's like, I just need you to take an envelope of money to this dude. Like, <laughs> this, is, this, is for, this is for, you know, Al for his truck, you know, I, and I even know the mechanic guy that I'm going to. It's a mechanic. Just so everybody knows in case everybody's like, why are you taking envelopes of money to people? Now, I'm not walking into a CD bar. It's a mechanic. <clears throat> Needless to say, I call the dude. No answer. I go to the shop, which is over on Tiedemann, Kevin, you know, yeah, go I, over to Tiedemann. Not a great place. Yeah, nobody's there. So I leave. I call my brother. I, I text my brother. I say, "Hey, man, I called him. I go, there was, there was no answer. There's nobody at the shop." He goes, "Did you leave a message?" I was like, "No, I didn't leave a message." <laughs> like, why? Am I, why do I gotta leave a message? <laughs> so then I leave a message for this dude. It's like three o'clock in the afternoon on Saturday. I leave a message for this dude. Like, hey, this is Donnie Anderson, my brother Al. Da 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 da. I've got the money. I guess I just need to know where to meet you. Where? Where? where what do I? How do I get this to you? He says, "I need to get this to you right now." And uh, nothing, you know, it's a it's nothing. Six hours later, nine o'clock Saturday night, this dude calls. Uh, and I'm just like, hello? <laughs> and he's just like, he goes, his name's Dan, too. He goes, this there is Danny. He goes, this is Danny. What do you want? And I'm just like, excuse me? And he's like, he's like, yeah, you called. What do you want? And I'm like, uh, and now I'm thinking to myself, I'm like, first off, if you knew that I called you, you obviously listened to my message. And in the message, I was pretty detailed about what I was calling you for. So I don't know why you're calling me. You know, right. Right. He goes, I, I was asleep. And I'm thinking to myself, like, dude, this was six hours ago. I, called you. <laughs> like, I, didn't, I didn't wait. It's not like I called you just now and woke you up. So I don't know what's the matter with you. So then I was like, I go, yeah, it's Donnie Anderson. I, I got Al's money. I'm supposed to drop it off to you. This is where it turns into, I think he was drunk because he just goes, Oh yeah, Al, uh, Alabama. Yeah, All right, I'll see. I'll see you on Monday. Have a good Easter. Click. Damn. What? And I'm just like, and I'm just sitting there like, what? Yeah. What? I'm like, what the, I'm like, what the fuck just happened here? Like, who? What? And then my brother's calling me up, and he's like, so what happened? And I go, dude, I, I I typed it all out. I text him. I was like, this is what happened. This is what he said. This is what I said. This is. I go, either that dude's out of it, either he's wasted. I don't know what his problem is. Da 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 da. Was my what does my brother send back? The genius that he is. Okay, thanks. <laughs> like, <laughs> okay, thanks. Okay, thanks. What? Like, or do I need to call this dude? Like, what? Am I? It's a whole thing. So I had to go out and see the guy today. Drove out there. Nobody there. Called. Nobody answered. Really? Right? So you went out there on your own accord to go out there to at some time, to, and even though you didn't, you didn't have a plan. Because I figured. Because I figure, hey, if he's if it's a shop, he must be working there. So maybe Makes I sense. show up at the shop and right. he would be there. Maybe he won't answer his phone because he's working on something. I go out there today. Nobody's out there. I call. Nobody answers. Dude calls me back and leaves a message because my phone shut off. I get the message. He goes, Donnie, it's Danny. Meet me at the shop tomorrow at 9 a.m. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, 9 a.m.? I don't get up. I don't get up at nine. I don't even get up at nine a.m. Let alone get up before nine a.m. Right. Like this, I, I'm like, and I'm, and that's that's why we were talking about like brothers being a hassle. Right. Like, right. It, it, that, that's and I'm just sitting here going like, why am I going through all these hoops to do? And then and then my brother calls. He goes, so so you're going to take that there tomorrow morning? And I said, yeah. I said, when are you coming home? He goes, I'll be home tomorrow. <laughs> So he could have just done it himself, basically. You know, pretty much. It's just like uh, right. So wow. There you go. I hope that's what you're entertained. That's what happens when you save a bunch of money on a car bill. <laughs> mm -hmm. Nice. Yeah. Well, that's Anderson's for you. <laughs> brothers are brother, brothers. Love no, listen, I, listen. I love my brothers, and if they call me, like obviously, if they call me, I'm there for them. Right. 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 But I'll tell you what, man, I just want to slap these guys sometimes. It's just like, I don't care. You all got black belts in Taekwondo, but I don't care. Mom loves me better. Hey, Al's got broken ribs now. You can mess him up. He's hit him once. He yeah. couldn't catch me anyways. <laughs> uh, all right. Uh, well, that's it for the show. Thanks, everybody. Dan, thanks a lot for joining the show and uh, telling us your story. It's great to have you 
great to talk to you in person. And, uh, and thanks for yeah. listening all those years. Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's yeah, awesome. I mean, some, I just got. Go ahead. Go ahead. I was just saying, you take some mighty okay. fine pictures. Hey, appreciate that. Yeah, you know, I, I'm just happy to be talking with you guys. I hope it went well. This is the first time I've ever done one of these. So oh, it went great. You know, yeah, I, I just appreciate it. And it's awesome to talk with you guys. I've been listening to you forever. So it's kind of like a cool, you know, just a cool way to, you know, at least at this point in my life, just a cool moment for me. <laughs> so I appreciate it. Absolutely. And uh, if you'd like to be interviewed on the show, send an email to oblast at vgn.us. Uh, I, I just want to point out that um, if you want to be on the show, send an email to oblast at vgn.us. Please don't contact me um, through any of the other uh, ways of contacting me. It's it's because I'm old and I can't remember everybody and all the different ways they've contacted me to know how to respond to you. Um, it, it's nicer if everything's consolidated in one place. Um, I know it, it sounds ridiculous, but the way Facebook is set up, like if you message me on Facebook – on the VGN page or on the Oblast page or my personal page. Like I have to switch modes to go to the different ones, the way Facebook has it set up. And then like, I have to try to remember which one you were communicating to me on. And, or if you send me an email to one of my like seven other email accounts, then like, I'm not sure which one to reply to you at. So please just send an email to oblast at bgn.us. I do want you on the show. If you'd like to be on the show, please, please ask and let me know. And uh, we'll, I'll tell you the details on that and we'll get you on. Um, but, uh, overall, that's it. Thanks for listening and, uh, good night. Peace. See ya.